So the next thing is um, we're going to collapse these drawings. And so it's really as simple as taking this information, all of your background information that's on a separate layer, and you're going to drop it behind using the move command. You're going to drop it right behind everything else. So you just basically put it right there. Um, it looks like, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to do it the other way. I think this is going to place it above. So I'll drop that on. No, it didn't. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. So what I want to try is selecting, yeah, the background information. That's what I want to do. I want to select that layer. So I'm going to, um, we're going to use lay ISO to our advantage here. So lay ISO will allow you to grab just that line work. And then you can uh, right click and say draw order. And we're going to send it to back. And this is just, in reality, the thicker line weights are going to show up above the other ones regardless. But once you start doing grayscales and colors in your drawings, you need to know which is going to be in front and which will be in the back. So I'm going to do send to back. Then I'm going to do uh, lay on ISO. And it turns it all back on again. And so this is what you'll see. All of the red lines around the perimeter of the building are showing above the green lines. Okay, so that's very important. Um, you want the information that's in the back to actually be physically in the back when, when possible and when prudent. So is this now starting to make sense to you guys, the process and how it comes together? Yeah, sort of, kind of. Um, so it, it really helps when you have a lot of detail. I'm just simulating that detail right now. You won't have that much detail in yours, but that's okay. Um, so now let's start talking about shading, right? So we've got... That drawing isn't right anymore. But we need to create a second page. And you might not have this step, but now I have to create a second page. So I'm going to set it up real quick again. Modify, I'm going to make this a tabloid size. Layout is good. Landscape. Okay. I'm going to grab that, copy it, go into here. And I'll set my viewport to be VP. I'll size it approximately and then uh, zoom in to the actual section itself. So here's where I have to set my scale. I'll try eighth inch. It looks like eighth inch actually works really well. So that'll work out well for me. I can close that off. Bring this in. And for my own sanity, um, I'm going to turn the VP layer off while I work on it. So that's a new you know, tip. When you're working with the viewports in AutoCAD, they're pretty annoying. I can't stand seeing them while I'm working on it, so I turn it off. It also is set to the no plot layer so that if I forget to turn it back on or something like that, it won't print. Okay, so let's talk about the actual nature of these hatch layers, right? So. My page setup manager, I set up to monochrome. Well, I didn't set it up, but I am setting it up to monochrome. And so when we take a look at what it looks like, it looks something like this. We have two different line type thicknesses. Um, well, essentially we only have one because I didn't actually program any of it in. I've got my earth hatch. I've got the detail lines behind, and I've got black in the poche for my building, right? But I wanted to see my foundation as something that was slightly different than the building itself. I want the, the foundation to be, um, in this case, because it's more prominent, right? It's like super thick versus the building, which is pretty thin. I'm going to make that black because that's going to pop more than anything else. Then the building I'm going to make gray because it's slightly less prominent than the foundation itself, right? Because, yeah. Anyway, so I'm making that gray in this case. 
So here's what you have to do. It's a page setup thing. And you guys should probably stop what you're doing and pay attention to this and just understand it conceptually because when you go back to review it for the exact little minor steps, it'll come very easily to you if you just listen up now. So um, in Page Setup Manager, we can modify these settings to um, basically create color assignments that are going to allow us to achieve certain results. So we have two options here. We can actually uh, physically change the pen assignment and pen being like the actual color itself. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So here's the plot style editor. So when I set this to monochrome, it has certain settings that change all of the color assignments to black. That's why we have to change our RGB value colors to an index value color. So that means color one, color two, all those ones you see at the bottom, those, what's that? Oh, um, so those uh, will be assigned to this particular property override. That's what all this is. Changes it to black, um, grayscale is off, right? So it just immediately changes it to black instead of anything else. Uh, you can override the line weight um, and the actual style, uh, the fills if it's a, if it's a hatch um, or if it's an actual closed polyline. All that stuff can be overridden simply based on the color itself. And that's um, important to understand as a principle but it's also important to understand where it came from too. So that actually came from what's called a pen style plotter. So back in the day, like the late 80s, early the earliest parts of the 90s, the dark days, um, a, a pen style plotter would essentially have an arm, like a robotic arm like you see on any plotter now where it kind of goes back and forth. Um, except this arm was basically a three axis CNC. It would have a housing on an arm that would go back to a tray. It would pick up a pen based on the color that you've assigned in AutoCAD. And it would pick up a pen and you would say, you know, color one, I want it to be black and I want it to be 0.9. And so it picks up anything that's red in the drawing and it would pick up that pen and it would draw those lines like a, a, th a three axis CNC. Well, I guess it's a two axis CNC because it's all 2D. Um, so anyway, that's where that all comes from. It still is present in this file type, um, but you just kind of need to understand, I think. It, it's, it's helpful for me to understand where it came from. So anyway, um, what we're gonna do is create a custom color pattern. And so this is how we're going to essentially say, well, rather than all black, I want a couple of very specific colors to be gray. So I'll go to new, and I'm just going to say, eh, I don't know what kind of file those were, but I'll just say start from scratch. And I'm going to call this one um, custom gray hatch. Then you go to the plot style table editor, and what you'll see here is something that's very different than the monochrome one that I just showed you. When it says color one, and you go to the properties, the default is use object color. So that's why if you don't set up your plot style, and you go to plot preview, everything shows up in the colors that you drew it in AutoCAD. Well, that's why. So we override that. So what I do is I'm going to, I don't know if it'll allow me to do all of them. Oh, well, okay. So I'm going to simulate the monochrome setting by changing all of the colors to black. So now when I go back up to color one, it's black, color three, 10, 13, whatever. Now to um, create the hatch pattern, I need to then change whatever specific hatch layer I want to the color that I've assigned to be a particular different color. So if I'm going to use color 10, um, I so actually I'll, I'll stop for a second and say almost all the time you want colors 1 through 9 to be black. Almost all the time. I would reserve 
pretty much anything else to be your custom modifiers. Just as you're, when you're getting started, you know, like as you're starting to learn the program, I'd say leave color one to nine black and then use the rest of them as custom modifiers for either, you know, transparencies or, you know, actual color drawings. Um, all that stuff, I think you should use a different color. Anyway, so um, we've got color 10 is going to be the one that I'm going to use, and I'm going to change that black value to a gray. But it still shows up black. Why? There we go. That was weird. So I changed it to gray. So now this has an RGB value. It doesn't have an index value, it has an RGB value that is assigned as an override to the index value. So I'll save and close that, and I'll hit finish. Now that shows up as custom gray hatch. So now on this drawing, all of those line weight or line colors, line types, layers, whatever, are applied to that particular setting or list of settings. So um, what I need to do then is change my hatch. So poche two, which is my building, to color ten. And so if you look here, these colors, see how it says index color ten? That's the one that I just modified. So I select that, it's now index color 10, and when I go to, um, excuse me, plot, and then preview, it actually shows up gray instead of black. So I went through that very, very slowly because it's important to understand that particular part if you choose to draw something in AutoCAD. You need to know that. So what other questions do you have about that before we roll into more modifications and cool graphic stuff we can do? Okay.